Welcome to Jambar TV. I'm Amanda Jorns. And I'm Thomas Kushner. In this week's episode of Jambar TV, we will be taking a look at new additions to Stambaugh Stadium, yoga with goats, and more. Later, we'll learn about White House Fruit Farm's fall festivities and give you an update on YSU sports, so stay tuned. As the Youngstown community gears up for football season, the concession stand will be serving up a classic drink, fit for the ice castle. Amanda has more. Youngstown State University football fans can now enjoy a can of Penguin City beer during football games featuring the limited edition beer can design of the 1994 championship season. Penguin City Beer is the first local brewery to sell beer at Stambaugh Stadium with the design product paying tribute to YSU Athletics. Mark Brungard holds a spot in the YSU Athletics Hall of Fame for leading the YSU football team to victory for the 1993 and 1994 championship. Brungard played a key role in the championship seasons and feels blessed to enter at a time with booming talent and great coaching staff. The program was just about to you know, burst onto the national scene. And so my very first year, I was just a practice player. I redshirted, I didn't play in any games. And, uh, but I watched this season unfold that took us to a national championship. So, you know, I obviously wanted to be a part of that in a, in a bigger form. Brungard hopes to attend a game or two this season to purchase a limited edition Penguin City beer can. And for this company to, uh, to make a tribute to that and, you know, to make this, this uh, commemorative can is, is pretty sweet. I hope to get one and keep it on my shelf and, and maybe taste one too. Penguin City Brewing's brand manager worked closely with the YSU Athletics Department to create a commemorative can design. We were thinking of ideas, doing you know, what to do, and then Rick Love was like, hey, it's the 25th anniversary of the championship team of 1994, we're like, okay, we have to do something, you know, with this first year, it's our first time doing it. I was like, kind of like scared, like, okay, what are we gonna do? So like, yeah. um, you know, how do we use Pete and put them all there? So that kind of like led everything with that, with the, um, the, the anniversary. Penguin City Brewing services over 300 locations in the Mahoning Valley and held a grand opening for their new venue at the B&O station on the outskirts of downtown Youngstown. Amanda Jort, GMBAR TV. East side of Stambaugh Stadium is sporting a brand new look. The Don Constantini Multimedia Center is the newest addition to the YSU Athletics and Telecommunication programs. Constantini's $1 million donation went toward radio booths, a classroom, and a control room that will allow easier access to YSU Athletics for stations like ESPN. It's really important that you know how to do everything in the studio so you could really understand the job at hand. A lot of the times when you start off in this field, you start off in a small market and you have to do everything yourself. You have to know how to edit, you have to know how to write scripts. So it's really important that here at YSU they teach you all those skills that you're going to need to be a professional in the future. Kimberly Whale, an award-winning speech strategist, held a lecture at Youngstown State University on September 4th in the Williamson Hall Auditorium. Whale has coached over 100 speakers globally, teaching them the techniques needed to tell a story. She also coached the speakers featured at TEDx Youngstown on September 7th. I've been a student of story for many, many years, and in working with speakers all over the globe on high-stakes short-form talks, and these are like TED-style talks and other talks where everything is on the line, you don't have an hour to tell a story. You have minutes, seconds in some cases. Youngstown State University students now have the opportunity to get out of the classroom and step onto a farm through a horseback riding class offered at YSU. Amy Watkins teaches 14 students in the class held on the farm in Canfield. Watkins is also the coach of the YSU equestrian team and says she thought the class would be helpful for the girls on the team. Walken says the class gives students another opportunity to ride during the week. She taught the class would be, would be good for the students in general. There's a wide variety of students in the class, from students who have never been around horses to those who have ridden their entire lives. Rick Hyman is a non-traditional student who has always been interested in horseback riding, but only had gone on guided trail rides. He says he started at ground zero and didn't have any experience at, experiences at all with horses. He says he started at ground zero and didn't have any experiences at all with horses. Stefan Dessler has been riding horses since she was about seven years old, and she is a member of the YSU equestrian team. 
Dessler says she now has the opportunity to help others learn about horses in the class. Students in the class say that their time on the farm is a nice break from their daily routine and is a stress reliever. The students are learning the beginning basics on how to lead a horse, lunging, mounting, and grooming. Additionally, they will eventually get the opportunity to ride. Penguin Positivity is a new campaign promoting mental health wellness among students at YSU. The campaign created by Hannah Haney and Ashley Amendel plans to scatter wooden boards around campus, featuring messages of positivity and support while directing students toward resources both on and off campus that can strengthen their mental stability. Although it isn't confirmed when the boards will be placed on campus, many student organizations are showing interest in promoting penguin positivity, including the Student Government Association and the Psychology and Counseling Honor Societies. Local high school students will visit Youngstown State University's campus on September 28th to learn the importance of athletic training. Funds to start the camp will be provided by the Ethnic Diversity Advisory Council. Youngstown City Schools has partnered with YSU to have graduate assistants work with the athletic trainers at the schools. Morgan Bagley, Program Director of the Masters of Athletic Training, says the profession is somewhat a young profession in the world of healthcare. So she is aiming to promote not only diversity, but also the profession. On Thursday, September 5th, the Youngstown State University Bitonte College of Health and Human Services presented a fundraiser for student scholarships and the hospitality management program called the Traveling Chefs from Taiwan. The event in Stanbaugh Auditorium showcased a multi-course cooking demonstration by Stone Sue and Stanley Lee, two winners of the cooking chef Iron Chef. The chefs traveled around the, the United States to increase cultural awareness through their cuisine. Additionally, the dinner offered a first-hand learning experience for hospitality management, food and nutrition, and dietetic students who were involved in organizing the event. Florence Wang expressed how important she believes this event is for Youngstown. The chef, traveling chef, they are only sent to the bigger cities that never been Youngstown. Until three years ago, we are lucky to pick up by culture center out at uh, Council General's office and uh, they decided to give us a, a chance. Um, we did pretty good. All of our educational partners coming together to enjoy an extraordinary evening. We're so looking forward to the cuisine of the gold medal chefs, Stone and Stanley. It's an exciting evening for us. I, I wish I could be there. I know I've got members of my team that are there. Have a great night. I'll get a back brief, but we'll see you again very, very soon. God bless you, my friends. Have a good evening. The Andrews Student Recreation and Wellness Center brought students yoga in a new, innovative way with goats. Jambar TV's own Brandon Brown took part in the action. Students and myself participated in goat yoga this afternoon outside of the Student Rec Center, where students were able to get some much needed relaxation at the start of the semester while getting the chance to play with some goats. The event was attended by a large number of YSU students and about eight goats. Participants had the opportunity to take part in a free yoga class with the added fun and stress relief from some furry friends. Bags of food were handed out so those doing yoga could interact with the goats. Instructor Melissa Kerr says she was first introduced to goat yoga while pursuing her doctorate using evidence-based findings of yoga in relation to physical therapy and health care. Goat yoga is when we bring the use of animals and what you might consider animal therapy into the realm of the practice or lifestyle of yoga. So we look at adding mindfulness, using the senses, um, hearing, sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell in the presence of animals to help us uh, regulate our autonomic nervous system, or in other words, de-stress. With goats grazing about, students couldn't help but draw comparison between other campus events. I love Puppy Palooza, and I almost cried at Llamageddon when I got to hug the llamas, and I thought, why not goats too? With so many students taking part with the galloping goats and downward dogs, goat yoga is sure to namaste year after year. For Jambar News, I'm Brandon Brown. Up next, executive producer Alyssa Weston will sit down with YSU student and self-published author Gigi Vigorito, author of With a Grain of Salt, so stay tuned. Indianapolis, the heart of hoops hysteria. And beginning in March, the home of the Horizon League Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. 
eight teams look to reach the horizon and punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Semifinal action takes place Monday, March 9th, and Horizon League champions are crowned Tuesday, March 10th. Visit horizonleague.com for more information and to score your tickets today. Hey, kid, you want to try some exercise? Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah, man, exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Today I'm joined with Gigi Vigorito. Gigi is a freshman here at Youngstown State University majoring in comp computer science. And Gigi has recently self-published a book titled With a Grain of Salt. Gigi, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I wanted to ask you, what inspired you to write this book? And can you briefly tell me what it's about? Um, well, actually, I've pretty much written poetry, novels my whole entire life. And this is the first collection of poems I feel that could uh, be um, accommodating for everybody. Because usually I write more of like a dark fantasy type genre, but I feel like writing poetry about not specific hardships, but hardships that everybody could view to their own perspective would be nice just so everybody could view it from their own life experiences. So I just kind of have been working on this for probably a little over a year and then certain things that have happened to me kind of inspired different poems. Um, so it's mostly just about taking those hardships that you've endured and being able to feel sad about them, being able to feel hurt, and then taking those hardships with a grain of salt and then pushing forward and realizing who you are and what your real potential is. So it's really taken you a long time to kind of write all this and get it all together and um, you know make it into one book. Um, so talk a little bit more about the title, With a Grain of Salt. Where did that come from, and what kind of influenced you to make that the title? Well, I feel like everybody has heard the phrase, like, oh, if you hear something you don't like, if something small happens, you know, just take it with a grain of salt and move on. But I kind of took that along with the idea of, like, rubbing salt in your wounds hurts. You know, like when you rub salt in a wound, it makes things worse. But I kind of took it as... You know, no matter what life throws of you, just take it with a grain of salt and move on. Take your life experience from it. Take all the knowledge you can from it and just grow as a person. You know, like, don't let it hinder you. Just take it with a grain of salt and move on. Um, can you speak a little bit on what hardships you endured that kind of, you know, made you decide to write all of this? Yes. Um, well, there's obvious basic hardships that everybody endures, like relationship hardships, hardships with friends. You know, there's been times where I've had like bumps in my relationship with my friendships, but mostly what towards the end, what really inspired me is like my mom passing, you know, because she, it was very unexpected. Um, and a lot of the poems, like a lot of the anger and sadness I felt, I actually put towards this book just because I felt like I couldn't express some of the normal emotions I was supposed to have because, you know, when, like, a parent dies, 
it's not okay to admit that you're angry. You know, like people think it's okay for you to be sad, but like what happens when somebody's like ripped from you quick? You know, like I feel like it's not normal to be angry. So all of the emotions that I felt that I felt like I couldn't project verbally, I put into words. It seems to me that poetry and writing has really become a creative outlet for you um, during a lot of your hardships. Can you touch on what started your interest in writing and poetry? Yeah, um, I actually have, like, I don't want to stroke my own ego, but I feel like I have a pretty vivid imagination, so I started writing stories when I was younger, and I believe a lot of my thoughts are pretty articulate, but I don't know how to project them to people verbally or really physically, so this is my outlet to say what I really want to say without saying it, and then people are able to view it or take it as art when this is really just an outlet for me. Um, do you have plans to publish more in the future? I do. Um, this was the first thing I published is because, like I said, I feel like it'd be easily digestible for any sort of audience. You know, it wasn't just specific to one genre. Anybody could take their own hardships and um, put it into perspective while reading. But hopefully I've written some larger novels and larger projects that I hope to publish within the next couple of years. Well, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your first uh, publication with us. Can you tell everyone where the, they can get it? Yeah, um, thank you for having me here. And right now it's on a website called Blurb. It's just blurb.com. You could look it up on there and eventually it will be on Amazon. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm YN Proud. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. Hey everybody, it's Lauren representing YSU Greek Life giving you your student activities minute of the week. So starting up first, we have sorority recruitment happening Thursday the 19th through Saturday the 21st. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be in a sorority, definitely come out and have a really good experience trying to figure out what sorority is right for you. This Saturday the 15th is YSU Family Day. Grab your families and come on out to YSU so you can show them your life as a student and what YSU has to offer you. Coming up on next Saturday the 21st is this year's Y Life performance featuring Blake Shelton. Everybody here at Student Activities and the Penguin Productions team have been working really hard to get this show on the road and I know Blake's been out here grinding and getting ready to put on a great show for us. Make sure you take advantage of the student discount with your Y number and get your tickets. There's still time left. So we'll see you on the 21st at the Ice Castle. White House Fruit Farms Fall Festival Weekends began sa Saturday, September 7th with pumpkin cinnamon donuts, apple cider, and homemade coffee. The farm's events continue throughout October and aim to give customers a fall experience where families can listen to local music, find a pumpkin to carve, and take photos at the sunflower fields. Jambar reporter Francis Claus has more. The Hall family has been bringing happiness to the valley since the late 18th century and is behind the success of Fall on the Farm. The preparations for these weekends are almost year-round. So I grew up on the farm. It was my grandfather's farm. We're now fourth generation on the farm and I am part of the third generation. We do a lot of fall decorations, um, whether it be linens or um, just small pieces to sit. Um, but we also do giftware in the kids area, we have a pets area, a lot of people buy for their pets, they'll buy them a bandana or a toy or something specific to uh, the fall or Halloween Christmas season. 
Um, so I would say mostly women items, um, home decorating items, and children. Everything we do is right here. When White House Fruit Farm decided a nice touch to their property would be a cafe, Emily Smith and her twin brother Levi didn't hesitate to jump on the opportunity to make their coffee house dreams come true. Autumn's always been my favorite season. Autumn's also the season where we get to do a lot of different creations. So not only do like, I love the weather, of course, but like we get toasted marshmallow in and brown sugar cinnamon and just those flavors. We do a drink called the Bonfire. It's um, toasted marshmallow, mocha, salted caramel, cinnamon, and it is divine. We do it frozen, so it's just like that perfect like mm, fall flavor. The fall festival weekends will be held every Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. until October 27th, with weather permitting. Francis Claus, Jambar TV. Mahoning Valley Historical Society partnered with Friends of Mahoning River Sunday, September 8th. They offered a free guided river walk to celebrate the Historic Society's 144th Founders Day celebration. We're doing historic river walks of uh, the Mahoning River. Um, we are combining or partnering with the Friends of the Mahoning River to tell both the history, uh, the present, and then the future of you know what's happening with Mahoning River, how it is you know impacted you know the people that came and settled here in the Mahoning Valley um, how it has been impacted by local industry and you know the use um, over time over the last several uh, centuries you know for industry purposes and things like that and then how it's now kind of coming back as a recreational um, use for people that are interested in you know just enjoying the river and its beauty now. Tyler History Center is located at 325 West Federal Street and is open to the public Tuesday through Sunday, noon to 4 p.m. Be sure to check out their website for more information and more events. Up next, Jambar reporters Brandon Terlecki and Dom Joseph will give you a look into YSU athletics. Join us after the commercial. It's always out there. The horizon. A reminder that our greatest goals are rarely attained. And as soon as you reach one, another emerges. But every day we rise and work harder, dig deeper, ask one more question, take one more shot in relentless pursuit of our horizon. The environment in the hospital can be very intense for a patient. Being able to put a smile on their face brightens up my day. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is nursing. What I love about studying nursing is that it takes you out of the classroom and into the lab. It's really hands-on. The professors here push you to be your absolute best, so if you want it, you gotta work hard for it. I am so excited about my future. I'm Shantiana, and I am why I'm proud. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root. And here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Dom Joseph. And I'm Brandon Trelecki, and we are here to bring you up to speed with what is going on in the world of sports here at Youngstown State. We start off here at the Ice Castle where the Penguins defeated Howard University in their home opener with a score of 54-28. to However, to coach Bo Pelini and some of the players on the team, winning on Saturday simply was not enough. We didn't play well. Um, we were undisciplined. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm embarrassed on how uh, in our, report, our performance. I mean, we're very thankful for the win, but it's just going in a conference like that, you know, with the teams we play, we got a lot of to work on. And we got to fix the, the mistakes that we put out there. Um, we're way better than that, like I said, and 
we just got a lot of work to do. Offensively, the Penguins put up 640 yards, 454 of those coming from the team's ground game. The running backs were led by Braxton Chapman with 132 yards and a touchdown. The team gets back to work next Saturday against Duquesne University at Stambaugh Stadium. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m. The NFL season is officially underway, and local fans had a week one that they would like to forget. The Cleveland Browns were shut out by the Tennessee Titans 43-14, and the Pittsburgh Steelers went to Foxborough, and the defending champion New England Patriots had their way. Dom, what did you see from Cleveland this past Sunday? Oh, my God. Well, the name of the game was penalties. I mean, 18 penalties, 182 yards, absolutely nothing will get done for the team if you have those kind of penalties. And then a missed extra point to start things out, not, not at all what you need from that team. What about the Steelers? Absolutely. I mean... When you have Ben Roethlisberger, Hall of Fame quarterback, Juju Smith-Schuster, Dante Moncrief, who didn't, have that who didn't have that great of a game, Ben Roethlisberger was 27 for 47. Dante Moncrief was targeted six times, had four drops. Juju Smith-Schuster had eight, eight, uh, eight targets and only six receptions. Man. So they have to be better. They're supposed to be a better team without A.B. and without Le'Veon Bell. This team was still supposed to be on top, and it's not looking that way. Absolutely. Well, we'll just have to see what happens next week. While fall is mainly the time for football, it's also time for the Youngstown State University softball program to prepare for the upcoming season. After finishing 25-29 and 29 last year, the Penguins set a team-high 11-game win streak and showed promise going forward. The Penguins softball team is back for a set of eight games over the next month. The Penguins are returning many players, including Horizon League Freshman of the Year, Addy Jarvis, who is the first player to strike out more than 200 batters in a season. Also returning is all-freshman team member Grace Sia, who led the team last season in RBIs. The Penguins start their slate of games tonight as they take on Cuyahoga Community College at 4 p.m. and Slippery Rock University at 8 p.m. Young South State's men's and women's cross-country team is off to the races where the new season gets underway and the Gwyns are looking to add even more to the trophy case on campus here in 2019. Ben Lulai has more. The Young South State University cross-country team is hoping to go off to a fast start in 2019. The team has had great success in the past as the men have won the Horizon League Championship two out of the past three years while the women have won the championship as early as 2015. Goal is to uh, put down some good races. We have some new freshmen coming in. Uh, again, placed very highly at the conference championship again. We'd like to shoot for a win or a top position in that once again, like we did last year. Uh, our team expectations are to work together and as we race, uh, continue to stay together as long as we can to kind of get that group pack mentality and hopefully come out with a championship at the end of the season. This YSU team isn't like any other past champion. On both the men's and women's teams, there is not a single senior on the roster. In most circumstances, this lack of veteran experience could be a heavy burden to carry, but not for this team. As uh, one of four upperclassmen on the team, uh, I've taken on, it feels nice because I've taken on more of a leadership role. Uh, it is also weird, though, not having the uh, older guys to go to, maybe. So it's an adjustment. It's fun, though. I enjoy it. The Penguins' next race will come at the All-Ohio Cross-Country Championships, Saturday, September 28th. Ben Lulai, Jambar TV. And so much domination over the years. Good luck to the men's and women's cross-country team this season. And especially good luck to the football team. Another home game this weekend. Yeah, I attended the game last weekend, and the crowd was great. There was a lot of energy, and I'm really excited to see where the season's going to go. Yeah, yeah the, new, the, uh, the new Constantini Center was awesome. Got to work in there. Great time. Yeah, I haven't been in there yet, but, but you worked the, That was the first time, right? Like, yeah. That was the yep. first time it was open? Okay. Yeah, very, very nice facility. They did a great job. Yeah, I was seeing, I was seeing it on, like, uh, on Facebook and Twitter and things like that. People were posting and trying to get it. Is it finished yet? Um, I don't believe so, but it should be done within the coming weeks. Well, it should get more exciting, especially because football right now, we're 2-0, so it's going to be a lot of fun for you. Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in to Jambar TV. For more information on our stories and more YSU content, check out our website or pick up a copy of the Jambar today. I'm Amanda Jorn, and we'll see you next Friday at noon, Penguins. Hey everybody, it's Lauren representing YSU Greek Life giving you your student activities minute of the week. So starting up first, we have sorority recruitment happening Thursday the 19th through Saturday the 21st. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be in a sorority, definitely come out and have a really good experience trying to figure out what sorority is right for you. This Saturday the 15th is YSU Family Day. Grab your families and come on out to YSU so you can show them your life as a student and what YSU has to offer you. 
Coming up on next Saturday the 21st is this year's Wildlife performance featuring Blake Shelton. Everybody here at Student Activities and the Penguin Productions team have been working really hard to get this show on the road and I know Blake's been out here grinding and getting ready to put on a great show for us. Make sure you take advantage of the student discount with your Y number and get your tickets. There's still time left. So we'll see you on the 21st at the Ice Castle.